All right, so we need uh, students asked me, I'm just going to write this real quick. Student asked me to go ahead and graph 2x plus 3y is less than 6 and graph y is greater than or equal to a negative 2 thirds x plus 4. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'll just go through this one a little bit um, slower just to make sure that, again, I reiterate graphing, because graphing was definitely the low point um, overall in all my Algebra 2 classes. So if you do not have, uh, or whatever to graph, I always like to think about things, always rewrite them, and slope intercept form. Now, I know that's an equation. Um, we're dealing with inequalities. But all inequalities are going to do is tell us if, this, if the line is a part or not a part of the solution, and as well as our, um, where our solution points lay, lie. So we need to solve for y. If you do not have an equation to solve for y, my recommendation is to write it in slope intercept form. So to do that, I will subtract the 2x on both sides. 3y is less than negative 2x plus 6. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. Please note that the 3, you have to divide into both of those terms. So I have y is less than negative 2 thirds x plus 2. OK? Now, to go ahead and graph. If you are having trouble with graphing, the best thing I like to do is identify what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. So in this equation, my slope is the coefficient of my linear variable, which is a negative 2 thirds. Please note that's equivalent to negative 2 over 3, which is equivalent to 2 over negative 3. It doesn't matter where the negative is. It can be up top, it can be below, or it can be in front. All right? But when graphing, we usually want to have the negative in the top or the bottom so we can tell as far as our rise and our run. All right? Then we need to determine the y-intercept. I always like to write the y-intercept as a coordinate point. What that does is that reminds me that it is a point. It is an intersection of the y-axis, which is right there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the y-intercept, which is at 0, 2. And just to show you that negative 2 thirds, the negative could be in the top and bottom, I'm going to have the negative up top. So that's going to tell me to go down 2 to the right 3. Okay. That is a less than symbol. So therefore, my line is not included. So I'm going to use a dashed line. Then you could obviously use a test point. And the best test point to choose would be 0, 0, as long as that does not go through the line. But also, another quick way that I talked about is as long as y is less than and y is solved for and on the left-hand side, we also know that we can shade below. Okay. Now. I go ahead and graph the other equation. y is greater than or equal to a negative 2 thirds x plus 4. And what we notice about this equation, ladies and gentlemen, is again, the slope is the same thing. And my y-intercept now is 0, 4. So now I plot my y-intercept, 1, 2, 3, 4. And instead of going down 2 to the right 3 like I did before, I'm going to go up 2 to the left 3. 1, 2, 3. But what I want you guys to notice is that the slopes are the same. It doesn't matter if you go down and over to the right or up and to the left when it's negative. But this is a greater than or equal to, so therefore that's going to be a solid line. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. And since it's greater than y is solved on the left-hand side, we know that it's going to be all the solutions to the graph are above the line. So if we're looking into this system of equations, we know we have parallel lines. If it was a system of equations, there'd be no solutions. However, the solution points are below this line and above this line. So even for the systems of inequalities, is there any intersection of the solutions? No. 